my little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And this video is sponsored by Lion Brand. Thank you very much, Lion Brand, also for providing me with this lovely yarn. Yes, Ferris wheel. I have grown to love this very much indeed. And uh, so thank you for providing the yarn. This is Morning Java. Mm, you know I love the coffee. And this project is, of course, also one of my favorite stitches, the granny stitch. And I have figured out a way very similar to the lace embrace shawl using the granny stitch to create the granny wraparound shawl. Hmm. And today we're going to be using some more Ferris wheel. And this is full moon. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Love the tones very much indeed. And uh, I just, the, the gradients and how they just sort of merge together, it's beautiful. So we're going to start actually with our neckline and we're going to work our way down. It's such an easy pattern. I'm sure you guys will love it. And uh, for this project, I used a size I crochet hook, which is a 5.5. Focus. Focus, please. No, focus. <laughs> it's a 5.5 millimeter hook that kind of doesn't want to focus on me. But at any rate, um, whatchamacallit, uh, I used about four skeins of this yarn to give you the specific details. It is approximately 270 yards per skein. It is machine washable and dryable, 100% acrylic, and it is a weight of four. Now you can go up or down a, a hook size if needs be. Gauge is not particularly important. All right. So with that being said, let's get started. Alrighty, so to begin with, of course, we are going to need a foundation chain for this project. And the foundation chain is 59 chains. And I went ahead, already did that. I did my slip stitch, my slip knot, um, and then I did my 59 chains. Then, after doing such, into the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, and four going to do a double crochet and into every chain. Also, I'm going into the back bump because it creates a neater edge and this is the neckline. So we want it to be nice and neat. So I'm going into the back bump. And so for every chain, do a double crochet until you reach the very end. And so I'm going to do a couple on camera and then I'll do the rest off camera and then we will get on to the first actual row. Now you can do instead, if you're so inclined, you could do a single crochet edge or, you know, a, a fancy edge, you know, like with, with scallops and picos and, you know, really whatever tickles your fancy, but you are going to need to adjust the chain length accordingly. Now, what you are ultimately going to need is 57 stitches to work within. And we went up to 59 because we're doing doubles. So if you want to tweak the neckline, go right ahead. You know, I won't take it personally. Um, but I'm letting you know that, you know, of course, as per usual, what it is that I'm doing so that if you want to follow along, go ahead. But you know, as I always say, march to the beat of your own bongos. By all means, you know, I am not a dictator. I just like to do what I do. All right. So just do your double crochets all the way across and see, we have a nice, clean, neat, and straight edge because we went into the back bumps. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to work my way across and do the rest of my double crochets until I reach the end. And then I should have a total of 57 double crochets. All righty. All right. So with some stitching off camera, I have my 57 double crochets all in a pretty little row. And so now this is where the fun starts. We're getting actual into the pattern. All right. So 
for the second row, not the foundation row, going to start by chaining up four. One, two, three, and four. And that's going to count as a double crochet and a chain one space. All right. And then into this very first stitch right here, we need three double crochets. And that's going to act as our first cluster. So all into that same stitch. Mm -hmm. All right, and then chain one and skipping three double crochets at the bottom here. So one, two, and three going into that fourth double crochet with three more doubles. to act as our second cluster. All right, let me just move my notes over closer so I can see them better. All right, so we've got our two clusters. Chain one. Now, I like to use a chain one space in between my clusters. You know, you can use no chain. Personally, I like to use the chain, you know, again, I'm not dictating, I'm just saying what works for me. All right, so we've got one cluster, two cluster. All right, we need one more cluster and then we'll do a corner. So again, going to skip three double crochets and then into the fourth, do another cluster of three doubles. Okay chain one. All right, now going to skip three more doubles and going into that fourth, we're going to do a corner cluster. So that is three doubles chain two and then into that same stitch, three more doubles. All right. So this, just like in a normal granny square, is going to act as our corner. All right, so from here, oh, there we go. All right chain one, skip three more double crochets going into the fourth with another cluster of three doubles. Chain one, skip three doubles going into the fourth with three more doubles. chain one. Now, technically speaking, right here is an increase point, which could act, you know, technically as a corner, if you will. And then we have two in between, right? Well, we have another corner, two in between. So we need ourselves another corner before very long. Looking at my notes, all right, we need one more cluster and then we will do another corner. So going to skip three doubles and then do another cluster of three doubles. All right, so we've got one, two, three, corner, one, two, three, and then we need another corner. So chain one, skip three doubles going into the fourth with two clusters separated by a chain two space. So that's three doubles, 
chain two and same space, three doubles. All right. Chain one, skip three doubles, going to the next with a cluster of three doubles. Chain one, skip three doubles, going into the next with three doubles for another cluster. Chain one, okay, and our third cluster in between. So skip three doubles, going into the fourth double with, you guessed it, three doubles. All right. Chain one, and just to make sure, yep, okay, so next up is another corner. So skip three doubles, going into the next with three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Three doubles, chain two, and three doubles. Okay, chain one, skip three doubles going into the next with three doubles. Chain one, skip three going into the next with three doubles. Keep having to pull out more yarn. I always ball it up first. I know it's in a cake form, but I'm particular. I'm weird. I know. All right, so chain one after that, and then into the very last double at the very end, going to go in to the top chain. It can be a little bit fiddly, but we only have to do it once, so it's no big deal. All right, go in underneath both loops with a cluster of three doubles. Chain one and double crochet into that same stitch. All right, now the hard part, believe it or not, is over. And that wasn't so hard, don't you think? All right, so from here, all we have to do is our basic granny stitch. And of course, you know I'm going to do several rows with you because I love spending time with you guys. All right, so with that being said, let's get to it, shall we? Alrighty, so this row and every row thereafter, very simply, going to start by chaining up four. One, two, three, and four. Turn the work. and into this chain one space right here, do three double crochets. Okay, chain one, and into the next chain one space, three doubles. chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space, chain one, three doubles into the next chain one space, chain one, and then we've reached a corner point. So 
into that chain two space, three doubles. chain two, and three more doubles. Okay. Chain one, and then into each chain one space along this side, three doubles. Chain one, three doubles. And this is one of those great projects where, you know, you really don't have to pay tremendously close attention to what you're doing. You can just get lost in it. And those are my favorite kind of patterns. You know, great for, you know, nestling down watching some movies and you know binge watching your favorite tv show and you know you can just enjoy yourself and do the project without having to agonize over a difficult pattern all right so we've reached another corner point so hop right in with three doubles and then chain two, and three more doubles. All right, chain one, and then do clusters into each of the chain one spaces along this edge. Of course, separated by a chain one space. You just work your way across and enjoy the way the colors slowly change. I tell you, I, I really am enjoying this yarn. It's very soft. It's very subtle. All right, and I've got one more, and then we have another corner. chain one and then at this corner yep you guessed it three doubles chain two three doubles okay and we are almost to the end of this row chain one and then three doubles into the next chain one space. And you always begin and end each row the exact same way. And we're almost there, so I'll show you what I mean. Just two more. Okay. All right, chain one, and then into the chain one space at the end, three doubles. Two and three chain one, and one more double. So it's always beginning and ending in the same fashion, you know, with three doubles, chain one, and a double. And then at the other end, it's a double, chain one space, and then three doubles. All right, so we're already making some rather pretty progress, don't you think? I think. All right, so let's do another row just for good measure. Okay, love this stuff. <laughs> All right, so let's do one more row together because I just love spending time with you guys and I want to make sure that you guys fully understand what it is that I'm doing and let's get to it. 
So going to chain up four, one, two, three, and four, turn the work, and into that chain one space once again, three doubles, go chain one three doubles into the next chain one space and then another chain one and then three more doubles and also I wanted you to see just where the colorway is going because you know like I said you know this yarn which yes I know I'm partial but um, this yarn um, like I said, the, the color change is very subtle. It's not choppy, and I really do appreciate that. It's not quite an ombre because it doesn't go from light to dark. No, it goes from, you know, one color to another color, all in the same colorway. And it's subtle, you know. It, it's not, um, there's not like a distinct line to it, and I can really appreciate that. So I'm just doing my... Three doubles, chain one, three doubles, chain one, three more doubles. And then we've got another corner. I think the only criticism that I can give is I wish there was more yardage in each skein. I, you know, I know I shouldn't speak badly and I don't think I am. You know, I just, I would like for there to be big skeins, sort of like, you know, Lion Brand's Pound of Love, which you know, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, I've been using that stuff for years. And I really do like the Pound of Love. So if they could do, you know, suggestion, if you could do Ferris wheel in pound skeins, I would be all over that. All right, so I did my, because I'm in my corner, so three doubles, chain two, and three more doubles, into the same space. So that, I, I would really enjoy that very, very much. I don't know if that would be possible, but, you know, I, I'd go for it. All right, so three doubles, and then chain one, and then three doubles into the next chain one space. You know, then, then again, of course, there is the ice cream, the big scoops, and they've got some really awesome colorways, and I've used that quite a few times as well. So there is variation out there. I just, I'm greedy. I want more. <laughs> you know I'm a yarnivore. So doing my three doubles, chain one, three doubles, chain one. And this project, it just flows. It's like butter. You know, it's such an easy project. You know, of course, as it gets bigger, each row will invariably take longer to do, and it will take up more yarn, naturally. Um, so, yes, I did, like I said, need about four skeins for a sufficient size for myself. However, you may need more, you may need less. Of course, it depends on the size that you're going for. So I reached another corner point. And into there, three doubles, chain two, three doubles. Chain two, and three more into that same space. See how it's changing again? You know, sort of tweed-like, so gorgeous. All right, so chain one, three doubles into the next. Pull out some more yarn. Okay. And chain one, three doubles into the next. Chain one, 
three into the next. Chain one, three in the next. Chain one, three in the next. Chain one. Okay, we've got another corner, so that's three doubles. Chain two and three more doubles. I lost myself. There we go. All right, so I've got my corner. Chain one, three into the next. And chain one, three in the next. Chain one, three in the next. Okay, and we are almost done with the row. Chain one, three in the next. Chain one, and into the last chain one space. Three doubles. Chain one. And one last double crochet. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to lay it out for you. And there we go. Give me one moment. I'll be right back. All right, so in just a few rows, you can really see where this project is going. You know, we have our tips, our corner points, and so this edge and this edge are gonna be the opening. And of course, we have our very simple yet elegant color, and we have our corner points, and you can see how the colors, they're very, very subtle, and I really do like that very much, as I, I know I've been gushing about it, but I can't help but gush, you know. You know, it's good stuff. I like it. So, with that being said, I hope that you guys give it a try as well, because it's an easy project, it's a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, it's great. You know, what can I say? You know, I, I absolutely love this stuff and I'm glad that I could share it with you. So if you like this, you know, please give a little thumbs up button down below because you know I appreciate your appreciation. And also I appreciate Lion Brand again for sponsoring this video and providing me with the yarn. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very touched and I feel very honored that they're working with me and I do appreciate that so much. <laughs> um, and uh, so listen, everybody, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.